welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I put out three new interviews every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones. Uh, all the usual places uh, with podcasts like uh, Spotify and Apple Podcast at NPR, WFBK.org, uh, YouTube for the video versions right here, uh, or anywhere you get your podcast from, subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. That's me, Kyle Meredith. Today, we get to talk about season two of Minx, which has begun now on Stars. Uh, we're going to be talking to uh, some of the cast. I've got Lennon Parham. She plays Shelly. Uh, Jessica Lowe, who plays Bambi. We've got Idara Victor, who plays Tina, and Oscar Montoya, who plays Richie. Now, if you're uh, if you're not caught up, and I don't know why you would, if you didn't see season one of Minx, uh, let, let's read uh, a bit of what's going on here. Set in the 1970s Los Angeles, Minx centers around Joyce, played o by Ophelia Lovamon, uh, an earnest young feminist who joins forces with a low-rent publisher, played by Jake Johnson, to create the first erotic magazine for women. Uh, in season two, Doug and Joyce grapple with Minx's explosive success, which brings more money, fame, and temptation than either of them know how to handle. So, of course, we're going to be talking all about season two with the cast. We're going to get into the characters and the storylines that kind of erupts out of this. You know, we when we left everybody in season one, everybody was in this moment of trying to find themselves. And that's exactly what we're going to get into where they have landed so far and the journey left to go. There's a lot of great music in this series, especially when you talk about the 1970s. So I want to ask everybody, you know, if they could go back and hang out with any of the great uh, musicians of the 70s, who would it be? We'll even talk about karaoke songs with some of the uh, some of the cast here. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We're talking season two of Minx, out now on Stars. It's Kyle Meredith with the cast of Minx. How are you? Hey, gosh, I don't even think I've ever Prince. seen that photo of Prince. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that picture of Prince. Yeah, that's a good that, that's calendar. That's a, well, it's a calendar, and I've just left it on the Prince page, but it happens to be June, Why which is not for the right you? year. Why yes. yeah, you would don't change it? <laughs> yes, I want to. So, Look at this office. I want to see <laughs> yeah, everything you amazing. got. It's way better than looking at me. That's why I have it there. Oh, this my is, God. The <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you, it's such a joy to watch you all do what you do in me. Thank, Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. We yeah. had a blast. Yes. <laughs> it looks like it. You know, Lennon, I'll, I'll start with you because, I mean, both of you all seem to be going through this trying to figure out who you are. Your characters are trying to figure out who they are in this exactly. is real time moment. Um, but I do love the discoveries that especially your character gets to make in this. How much of this did you know going in and, and, and what was the story you wanted to tell? Yeah, I mean, when I signed up for the pilot, I didn't know any of it. <laughs> I, I was she was sort of a suburban housewife that maybe subverted some expectations. But then when I found out she was going to get involved with the magazine, I was like, oh, even better, you know. Um, and Ellen took me through what was going to happen in season one, which was so exciting. And also, I love working with Jess, so that's like a bonus. Um, but then when she she did pitch me through or take me through season two and the journey that Shelly goes on. Um, and I was really excited. I mean, it seemed like a daunting task. It is quite a journey from start to finish, um, but also one that I feel like really honored to tell and like the truth of this uh, human, you know? So. Yeah. And, and, and Jessica with, with Bambi, I mean, again, you have your own goals that you're kind of figuring out as you're going along. But I want to say like in all of this, she comes across as one of the kindest, you know, people in the world. Do, do you consider where that comes from uh, in a character like this? Like the backstory moments? I know, because I think she is, uh, she's lived a tough life. She's lived hard. Um, she, I think, has so much empathy because she's seen so much and she just, feels with her whole self and she just loves everyone genuinely. Yeah. She's super um, empathetic, but yeah. also no judgments ever, no judgments. So it's like a really safe place. And you said earlier, I thought that your character is a survivor, which I really love totally. as well. At yeah. least one cult, possibly two. 
<laughs> See, in those moments, by the way, we get these little hints yeah. of her past. Yes. And I think I want those stories. I, I want those off. cutaway episodes. Yeah. We had a flashback of Joyce undercover at a commune. Why not? I know. When you were in the cult. Please. <laughs> Maybe a cult's a coming. Maybe a cult's a coming. <laughs> it's such a fun show and and the story arc that's happening in this new season because Tina it's always she's always looked like she's been ascending even mm-hmm. in the shadows mm-hmm. but there's mm-hmm. this line that I kept getting stuck on this this season and she says I don't want to be your role model I just want to have fun yes yeah so so what does it play with her I mean because she obviously wants the success but what is there like is it mean to a point is there a, a drawing line there I think she just makes the distinction between personal accomplishment and becoming everything that she could become and becoming an example for someone else that then they would ha- be able to dictate her moves. Um, she wants to have a good time. She does still call herself good time Tina, mm-hmm. but at the, so she doesn't want to have, she doesn't want to be relegated to the role of responsibility that she oftentimes is. She wants to have the freedom to be whatever she is. And she doesn't want to have to be a representative for her entire community. She doesn't want to have to be, uh, you know, the person that the go-to person for everything. She wants to be able to become everything that she could possibly be, but she doesn't want to have to become the archetype for everyone else Mm -hmm. to sort of look to the example in that way and the example exactly yeah i think in like especially like in the workforce when you are the only one if you're like a minority of some yes you suddenly become like the spokesperson spokesperson for for that group race yeah Yeah, exactly exactly. and it's like with 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 that line in particular tina's saying like i am not i don't that's exhausting yeah i don't want to do that work because you know that is work that's labor on us too to be like you know a well-meaning person being like, teach me. It's like, that's work. That's still work, you know? And we, mm-hmm. we that's not our responsibility mm-hmm. to be the figurehead, to be the spokesperson, to be the example. Sometimes just you existing, that's enough. That should be enough. And I love that the show actually tackled that this season. Mm-hmm. I thought it was amazing mm-hmm. that they allowed for that line and for that moment to happen and for, you know, for Bambi to be able to accept that and go, okay, th- she is saying like, she does not want to have to teach me. She does not yeah. want to have to, she doesn't want me shadowing her, you know? Um, she just wants to exist, you know? Right. Um, right. I love that the show did that. Yeah. Well, that's, that, it's interesting that what you're talking and, and Oscar, you were kind of getting on about that too, is, is, you know, a lot of the topics that you're hitting on are, are obviously big topics now. Like Mm -hmm. so much haven't changed. Mm -hmm. So this show gets to speak for that. And and maybe this has been covered. I mean, I I know this has been covered some with the first season too, but, but Oscar, if you want to start with this one, like, what is the, what is the story of the, which seventies are you trying to tell here? If that makes sense. Mm, That's a a fantastic question. I love that question. You know, we're trying to tell an authentic seventies. Yes. Give yourself a round of applause. (laughs) (laughs) I think we're trying to tell an authentic story of, of the seventies of the LA mm-hmm. 70s experience there is I think we like I think we got it in season one and season two we're trying to really hone it in right mm-hmm. and I think we're trying to tell a bunch of different stories mm-hmm. authentic stories of all kinds of people you know the 70s experience isn't a monolith you yeah. know not everyone lived exactly the same way the way that Joyce lived her life in the 70s isn't the way that Tina lived her life in the 70s At all. isn't the same way I uh, Richie Richie lived his life in the 70s right. you know so and what I love about season two is that it's taking the time to d- develop all of our stories mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we're able to see all of us really live our lives and have our distinct point of view Mm -hmm. which is incredible and not an opportunity that like if it was any other show i don't think we would get that opportunity but the magic of ellen rapaport the creator like she recognizes the strength in the ensemble right and it is about the group of us coming together and being apart and then coming back together again you know so it is that story it is that narrative Yeah. yeah and i think they do a great job in 2023 of taking what's relevant to you know the events of today and mm-hmm. being able to pull that tease that out with us being having the hindsight that we do of what right. they were you know dealing with in the 70s they are they're able to tease those subjects out in a really clever way yeah because sometimes yeah. the the greatest um feedback that i got from the show was somebody was watching it and, and they were like 
I, I was watching the show and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that people were like that in the 70s. And right. then they looked at the newspaper and were like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh that's today. <laughs> that's too. still happening. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And everybody begins to become, I mean, whoever's on the screen becomes the main character to me. Exactly. And that's, that's what I love about exactly. this show as well. Absolutely. Obviously, all these things were happening in the 70s, but a lot of these stories are happening now. You know, mm -hmm, yeah. and, and and the moments where you get to talk to those moments of now through this lens. And 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 I'll throw this to both of you too, because I would love to know through your eyes, like what what is the version of the 70s that you do want to tell? I I think something interesting that we hit on is just the idea of standing up for what's right. And as far as you know, second or third wave feminism goes, um, it felt like uh, as a group women had been pushed down for so long they needed to get you know rights um like elizabeth katie stanton and i it's been a million years since i took my <laughs> women's, women's studies, studies project. Project. Yeah. but it's interesting that we sort of hit on the fact that this was sort of a straight white women cause mm -hmm. and there are many aspects that we are ignoring mm -hmm. when we just look at the straight white women's cause of equality. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm really glad that we touched on that this season. Yeah. yeah, it does. I felt that same way when I read the pilot and, and then throughout the season one, and we do it obviously season two as well, but like how current it feels yes. like, honestly, just the reflection that, oh my God, we're still having this conversation. We have not come far at all, or the acknowledgement that we have made progress, but but there's still such a long way to go. It just, it you know, I I, I love that that this show, in all of its glitz and glamour, kind of and penises and <laughs> and all that stuff, throws, <laughs> throws it throws it back in your face a little bit, like a, a little bit of a of a mirror, you know. Yeah. Hearing the words penis and throwing it back in your face. I'm glad there was words yeah. in between those we two need, sentences. We need to be throwing penises like back schwanz, in the face. Schwanz in your face. <laughs> in the face. Yeah. The other side of it, and, and I'm glad that we're using, I'm use, using this as a seg, is the the, <laughs> the fun side, um, you know, because I was so happy to see that the, the music, yeah, the music scene was being, you know, shown oh, around. Yeah. Here. And we've got these great rock stars walking yes. around and sometimes, yes. uh, you know, mingling and, and sleeping with everybody. And, and so... Throwing that on you all, you know, what if you're in the 70s and you're in this scene, who are oh. the musicians that you'd want to hang out with? Oh, this is a good question. Um, uh, early. Um, I mean, yeah, Linda Ronstadt for sure. Although I didn't learn about her. I learned about her like covering classics on Lush Life with my mom and her cassette tape. But like, um, yeah, I, there's the whole like the whole free love movement, like all the <laughs> musicians that were like, Riding around in vans like bread. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't that sound fun? I and mean, just like getting so high and just like jamming on a tambourine. That sounds like such a nice break. <laughs> I was listening to the Billboard Top 100 of 1973, and yeah. there are a couple Barry White songs oh, that I just really get is you. a vibe. Get you. Just yeah. yeah. He just wants to take his time and get really? to know you, get to know you inside and out. And I really appreciate that about Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Who would it be that you all wanted to hang with in that scene in the 70s? Oh my Ooh. God, I love this question. Oh. Honestly, it might have been a little early for her, but Donna Summer for me. Mm. I would be most curious about hanging with Donna Summer because mm -hmm. she seemed like she was living a wild life. And it was in stark contrast to the life she grew up with. And I would just be really curious about her perspective. Yes. Yeah. You know, I like, um, uh, there is a group called the Sexolettes in the 70s. Um, and they're like, they're like New York underground disco music very cool very it's got the, uh, it feels just very alive mm -hmm. and uh, i would love to hang out with them because they know how to have a good time <laughs> but we were only i mean i think we're only what a little bit away from really the disco moments i mean Giorgio hey, Moroder. just yeah you know, we're not too much Simon, just, right? yeah, yeah we're just about to enter mm -hmm. knocking on that door season well three and four exactly <laughs> right there there it is <laughs> seasons three and four <laughs> <laughs> I, I i do want to see that stuff and uh yeah and, and, and just you know even kind of watching like a Dara, you know, lo looking at uh, some of your socials and everything, I, I thought, I wonder how much Broadway and musicals really flavor, like, the music that you'd want to hear at that time. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny you say that because um, obviously like the big one from the 70s is Hair, you know, the music in terms of a musical that really was like transformative. Um, And I I do feel like um, we've thought about the ways in which we could incorporate the talents of the cast into the show because he's uh, Oscar's an amazing dancer. And so it was like, well, how can we bring like dancing into this Mm -hmm. (laughs) through Richie or like, how can we have like musical numbers? And so I like that this season we actually have like a kind of musical number that have a musical yeah. review uh that happens but um yeah i think it would be really a fun thing for us to just continue to include more music into the show and um especially when it comes to musicals there's Absolutely. so much fun you can have with that yeah because right. the music you know the seven it's interesting because we're coming out of the 60s sort mm-hmm. of like uh political civil rights movement mm-hmm. you know and then we're leaning into that excessive like okay the release of all of that strife and struggle yeah and into like the party yes. of it all, right yes. so the 70s is just like a, a sort of celebration of self yeah yes. um and there's something really liberating about reflecting that in the music scene mm-hmm. too yeah yeah and, and 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 to you know further on in your character oscar with, with richie I feel like, you know, the music scene being one thing, but the photography, the art scene might have been the most eccentric and weird thing that was going on in all of America at that point. Yeah, absolutely. What's it been like to play around with that side of things? And uh, and do you think we're going to get a little bit even weirder? (laughs) <laughs> of course we are. If the choice is to go weirder, the answer is yes. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. No, I think like photography during that time was seen as something quite revolutionary. And especially like who is behind the lens, right? Like we're starting to see like the celebrity culture of photographers during the 70s, the Robble Maplethorpes. Um, and like, I think it is like, what is the subject? What, what are, who are we seeing? What, you could take a picture of something, but most importantly, who is the person taking that picture right. and how does that translate? And, I, and that's why I love photography. That's why it's so cool and important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. and Jessica, seeing that, you know, you're into the karaoke as well. I figure that's got to play into this at some point. <laughs> I'm into karaoke. I saw a picture. It's like one of your socials and everything. You're doing the oh, karaoke. Oh, that is but... correct. That is correct. Yeah. I'm facing a wall. No, I we do love karaoke. A, we went to an epic karaoke. Like it was at the end of season one. Me, you, Ophelia, Oscar. Oh yeah. yeah well, that was such a fun night. We went to the diviest dive um, in and North was, Hollywood. Yeah, it was and just it one was bar where people were performing. Fantastic. Remember that guy? This really unassuming guy that looked like he might have walked off the Shire. Yeah. And he sang at last yeah yeah <laughs> and it was the most crazy i was like etta is that is that you um and we're talking about doing a karaoke night tonight actually we are ophelia Nobody is begging me. for Surprise. it of, I yeah. need to get a sitter. <laughs> Congrats on season two. I can't wait for three, four, six, seven, and all the rest. So. Yes, yes, absolutely. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Take care. Thank you all. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.